Hey everybody, I'm, this is a quick video where I'm going to show you how to compress files and folders to their absolute maximum potential inside of Linux. All right, so I have a folder right here, uh, this, this folder right here, and obviously you can see in my file, uh, well, can you see in my file browser? No, you can't see how big it is. All right, well, anyway, I'm going to show you really quick how to find out how big a folder is. So what we're going to do is we're going to type out a program, we're going to type out du for disk usage, we're going to type S for summary, H for human readable format, and we're going to type up the name of the folder. All right, so this is how big a folder is, 558 megs. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm in a root directory, so I have to type sudo for everything. But if you're in your home directory, you don't need to worry about this. We're going to touch the file. We're going to create the file that we're going to use for our backup. .tar. Actually. So this is the quick version of how to do maximum compression backups. We're going to type tar uh, create archive v for verbose and underscore data. And we're going to pipe that through our compression program, which is going to be xz. I'm going to pick 9 for greatest compression level, and we're going to pipe that into the file backup that we just created. And I'm going to run this. Hold on a second now. Hold on a sec now. Hold on just a... Oh, <laughs> I know what I did wrong. <laughs> I think. There we go. I had to give myself permissions on the folder file I just created. All right. All right, so we're going to see here it's running through the folder recursively, and it's uh, compressing all the uh, all the files I have in there. I'm sorry that there's no background music or anything for me to entertain you with, but uh, you know how copyright is. Don't worry. We'll get to the bottom of this here in a second. Well, I guess if you just wanted the quick and dirty, that was the quick and dirty. That's how you do the maximum level of compression inside of Unix. Uh, I'll tell you what it's happening right now. So right now, we have a program called TAR, which is pretty common for all Unix um based environments. Uh, even Android has it, I think. Uh, or at least you can get it on your Android phone if you have it rooted. Anyway, uh, I think BSD probably also has it. So what TAR does, TAR it just um, takes folders and files and it just compresses them into one single file. It's kind of like putting things in a zip, but without any compression at all. And then what you can do after you pipe everything through TAR, is you can then pipe that through a compression program. There are different compression programs. One of the most common is gzip. Uh, you'll see that a lot. That's actually still used uh, for compressing a lot of websites and stuff. But yeah, there's another program, I think it's called bzip, which is a little bit better than gzip. And then one of the best programs of all time is xz. That's the best one that's out right now. xz does the greatest level of compression. So you have got a couple of choices there and I'm going to do a comparison here uh, just a second here to show you how 
much better XC is at compressing. But you got to remember, or at least you have to know how to specify what compression level you want, because if you just type XZ by itself, you'll get like a default level of compression, which might be like medium compression or something like that. So you may not notice that big much of a difference. In fact, sometimes when I type out, uh, if I just type out uh, GZ or something like that. Sometimes I, I almost don't know as any uh, compression at all when I put everything all into a single file. Uh, this is really useful if you need to transfer a lot of data from like a remote computer to your computer. Sometimes it helps too. All right, so we're done. Uh, so we're gonna see how big this file is. Do you? And SH or DUSH as I like to call it. And we're gonna do backup. So this is the size of our backup. Now remember, beforehand we did, so we've gone from 558 to 128. So I'm gonna do a little quick comparison right here. We'll do uh, gzip as well. Uh, do I have bzip on here? Oh, I do, I do have bzip. I don't know if I can do bzip through tar or not. Anyway, uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can use tar to compress your files. Uh, but if you want to actually specify the maximum level of compression that the compression algorithm can give you, we'll do a little comparison here. The tar, uh, pseudo tom. And we're gonna, oh, excuse me. Let's do touch first, cause I'm in a root directory. And we're gonna touch our comparison backup.tar.gz and sudo okay well let's run that again oh i know i whoops put a dash instead of a dot all right all right, so now let's run our program again. New sudo tar. Um, I'm gonna create a directory, uh, create a file uh, v for verbose, and we are going to be compressing everything. Or we're gonna be compressing this folder right here. And we're going to pipe that after. So basically what we're doing in the first command, we're taking everything inside of this folder and we're going to put it into a single file. And that file is going to be backup.tar. After we do that, we're going to then put this through a compression program. Now for comparison, let's do gzip. We're going to do maximum compression. That's dash nine. Uh, I think you can also do dash best, but I'm just going to do dash nine. And then we're going to direct the output of that compression into this file, backup.gz. All right. Excuse me. Pseudo. All right. And now it's running a little bit faster here because the compression is not as great. And you'll see that here in just a second. But GZ is probably one of the most common ones. If you are new to Unix or Linux, you'll notice a lot of the files, a lot of times source code, things like that, that you download over the internet, it'll be compressed in a tar.gz file. If you're on Windows or Mac OS, um, a great program, or Windows at least, a great program that you can use to deal with these files is 7-zip. That's number seven and zip. So search that on the Google or the DuckDuckGo and install that program and it'll actually let you make these kinds of compressions on uh, Windows. All right, so let's do a comparison now. Let's do do, do backup, cheesy, and then we'll do do, that's it. And we'll do backup, XC, and then we'll do do, sh the original folder. All right, so here we see GZ, we've compressed it to about 256 megs. The original was 558 megs. And with XZ, we managed to get that down to 128 megs. 
So that's a little quick comparison between G uh, Gzip and XZ. Uh, are there others? Yes, there's Bzip as well. Bzip is a little bit better than GZ. Uh, I know that you can use Bzip with um, web if you if you build websites and stuff like that. I know you can install Bzip to get uh, and combine that with Nginx uh, to give greater levels of compression than Gzip normally would. I don't know if you can do the same with XZ. But anyway, that's just a quick little tutorial video on how to compress uh, files and folders. Now, if you wanted to do, like, a, let's say, just a couple of files, like, let's say um, we go into a directory here and we wanted to uh, do, like, a couple of files or something like that, you would actually just do... We wanted to do, let's say, yeah. So this directory folder data, we could do something like third party. Uh, and then we can actually also specify other folders as well. Uh, we can specify, uh, I don't know, um, data. What else is there in here? Uh, read me. No, no, no. Uh, let's see, there's there should be a readme in here, right? Oh, no, console. We can do apps. Uh, remember, if you put a slash at the end of a folder, that means you want to compress the files in the folder. If you remove that slash at the end, that means you want to compress the folder. Uh, so we can do something like this if we wanted to. Um, and then we would see inside of uh, the the zip file, we would see those specific. So you can, anyway, you can list off as many, they can be individual folders or files. So like we can specify a file as well if we wanted to. Like index HTML. And then only those things would be included in the backup. So if we do, you'll see here we're running through the first folder I specified and then apps, the second folder I specified, and then we'll do index.html. Yeah, see? So anyway, if you want to just do specific files or folders, you can specify it just like that. Anyway, but that's the short version. The short version really is, like I said, I'm in a root directory, so that's why I keep typing sudo. But the short version is create verbose. No, what, what you want. Pipe xe maximum compression output to file dot tar dot xe remember the tar dot xe is important it shouldn't be too hard to remember you're using xe as the program to compress and xe as your file extension that's the short way that you uh, compress stuff and that's how you get maximum compression in linux all right i hope you found this video useful if you did be sure to give a thumbs up uh, all right